So um, the emergence of LEDs in, um, in the UV space is, is relatively new, very new, especially for the, for the deep UV, um, which is what we do. So we, we make UVC LEDs in, um, from homegrown aluminum nitride crystals. So our secret sauce is, is in, the, um, in the substrate crystal growth technology. We make it from a very high power UVC LEDs and a proprietary low defect uh, 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 crystal growth technology. So I won't go into the, the process, but this is, we do all of this um, and we, we are, um, our product ends here in the, in the LED itself. And you'll hear from another presenter who takes that and, um, and uh, builds on the value chain from there. So um, being a solid state technology, it's, it's tailorable. And one of, the, one of the key features is that we can choose what wavelength we focus on. So unlike the blue here, which was a medium, power, which is a medium, um, medium pressure mercury lamp, which has all of these wasted uh, uh, bands up here, we make a very uh, narrow band, 250 to 280 nanometer LED. Um, actually, we bend them 250 to 280, so we make a very monochromatic light source. And so, as a result, um, we're much more efficient. We tailor it to that because it, is the, it overlaps with the uh, maximum absorption of bacteria, viruses, and cryptosporidium. Um, but in addition to, to being germicidal, also in this range, it's interesting uh, for instrumentation sectors because we're ideally suited for measuring the absorption and fluorescing species that are also particular in that area. So those are really our two key market areas uh, initially is in the, the, the germicidal water sterilization as well as in the, um, in the instrumentation. So again, we're wavelength specific, monochromatic, wavelength specific, um, high irradiance point sources. So that's uh, the point source is important for the instrumentation. Um, the power you see here, 66 milliwatts, was, is, our, is a leading in the industry. Um, we've gone, since I've been with the company for two years, we've gone from talking about five milliwatt devices to now uh, 66 milliwatt devices, and we're going up from there. So, so it really is the special part, is the aluminum nitride that brings out this power. It also brings out the lifetime. So the long-lasting, inherently long life of LEDs um, is sort of more difficult to get than you would think, and it's the, it's the, uh, the defect-free crystal that allows that to be. Um, the, the two pieces of the value proposition that bring most people to us are the next two, which are compact and versatile. So what we're really doing is enabling design freedom and doing things for uh, end users and, and um, OEMs that they couldn't do before with mercury lamps, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then the next two, safe and environmentally friendly, of course, no mercury, no potential for leaking uh, toxins, and, um, and no quartz tube. So, so no glass, very robust technology. Everything is Rojas um, uh, compliant and disposable. So, um, and then finally, instantaneous. So it's a solid state technology, just like your computer. So it's instant on, instant off, no warm up time, and energy efficiency, like we talked about before. So our, our um, LEDs are used for in monitoring and purification. And right now we're working with OEMs to specify flagship products. So we're early on the S curve, like Paul talked about this morning, working with the pre-early adopters, the lead users, for in flagship products for their product portfolios. So I can't talk about the specific customers, but we're in each of the areas, water, food, air, and healthcare industries. But frankly, uh, our, our largest focus is in the water area. So um, this is in point of use, drinking water disinfection, which is, is probably what you would expect for consumer devices and other um, applications. Um, but also in water quality monitoring. So we talked about fluorescing and absorbing species. So online water quality monitoring where LEDs are replacing things like xenon flash lamps and other uh, light sources has been a, um, a key, a key uh, application for us. And then even in the ultra pure water generation. So we've met NSF 55 criteria in the drinking water and we're also meeting the type 1, 2, and 3 uh, applications in laboratory water. Um, so we have technically proven this technology, and you'll start to see products coming to market in the next um, uh, couple of years. 
The, the other markets, and I'll just quickly go through these in the interest of time, but the food application area, we're still early in the R&D phase here. We're working with research teams in the traditional areas of um, UV homogenization, but also in surface sanitization where we can get the LEDs into areas where other light sources can't go. And we're also in air applications, so in-room UVGI is an example we work with Harvard Medical Health for um, uh, drug-resistant tuberculosis and eliminating that and showing that the UV LEDs are in many ways um, much more effective than the, the mercury lamps that are used today. So we're working on proving out that technology as well as well as air quality monitoring, so pollutants like ozone and things like that. So like, like with water, air has both the, the monitoring side as well as the disinfection side. And, uh, and also in healthcare and life sciences, so microvolume DNA quantification, microvolume in handheld instruments and the scientific instrument side, we're specifying and qualifying our LEDs into those applications as well. Uh, dialysis adequacy, in other words, uh, urea endpoint detection is another uh, application for us in the healthcare. And then um, surface sterilization, all kinds of little things, catheters, et cetera, need to be sterilized. And the UV LED does better than the big, you know, you, uh, uh, the mercury lamps for that. Um, so where we are today is we're going to be launching two products. We'll launch, you'll see here, the, the longest, um, uh, this, I'm sorry, is missing in your book. I noticed it this morning. But this is our, our commercialization timeline. We've frozen in our, our technology development um, so that we can uh, develop products. We're actually still developing technology, but in tr terms of our new product introduction cycle, we're using um, a technology that we've, all the processes have, have been locked in. So we'll, we'll launch first an instrumentation product. The latest will be 2014, but we're trying to get it into 2013. And then um, following that, and again, this, this is another one that both I, as the business development person and the CEO, is, is uh, committed to pulling in, but of course we, um, we, we don't want to overcommit. So 2015 will be the latest that we introduce our, our purification high power package for the water industry, um, but our sincere desire is to hit, get it into uh, 2014. Um, so I talked about we're specifying to end users and uh, we are also expanding our business model to include UV source and, and system integrators to access broader pieces of the market. And I, I've certainly found that any time, you heard about disruptive technologies from Paul this morning as replacement technologies in stable markets, and that's absolutely going to be a place for UV LEDs. You can see these are all applications that we're working on with various customers now. Um, but additionally, what we find is that whenever we have this kind of design freedom enabling, um, there's not only replacement, but um, new, new what, what we don't know, um, we don't know what we don't know, and so there's a lot more uh, new technologies that are able to be introduced as well. So it's a very exciting time for us. Thank you.